Tara slept over last night, and in the morning, I'm getting ready for work, so I get out of the shower, and dog, name of Gak, comes in my room, hangs out with me and Tara for a minute. I'm sitting right where I'm sitting right now. My door is open so I can see out the hallway, down the hallway. He walks into the hallway and just pisses on the wall. Lift his leg and yeah. everything. And I go, what the fuck was that? And I shouted at him. I made him go outside to finish. So he knew he wasn't supposed to do it. I've never seen him do that before. He was acting weird the other day when I was leaving. Yeah. I left. I think it was after we did the podcast on Saturday. Yeah. And it was like midnight, one o'clock or whatever. And I was leaving and he was he was laying up on top of the stairs but he was awake. Mm-hmm. And like I went up and like started like, you know, petted him to like say goodnight, you know? Yeah. And he like got up kind of, you know, like his ta- his... Well, his tail started wagging, like, when he saw me, so that's why I went over there, because yeah. it wouldn't wake him up, but he started, like, sniffing me, like, really aggressively, <laughs> like he was smelling something interesting. Did you go to Colleen's house? Yeah. Yep. But, I mean, she doesn't have any animals, but I guess it's new just house. a new house. Yep. Yeah. New. Um, that's so crazy that they know. And he started, like, barking and shit. <laughs> And, like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave, and hopefully he settles down. <laughs> He's not used to that smell yet. He's acting really... But he wasn't even, like, barking at me. Mm-hmm. He was, like, looking in the other direction, and he was yeah. barking. And then, like, I was, like, walking up the door, and he's, at this point, he's standing up. And he's just, like, looking at the wall, barking. Not, like, at the wall, but, like, he's... he's oh, like, I, no, I love when he does that, when he goes, Bruf! but then, as soon as he barks, he changes directions. He's still barking at you, but he won't look at you. Yeah, maybe he but he never those. barked at me. Yeah, he never barked in my direction. Like maybe he was. He just... Maybe he was barking at two things. One, a ghost. The other night, Tara for sure heard someone say my name. Everyone was asleep. It was like three a.m. Mm-hmm. Nobody else in the house. You know this house is fucking haunted. I've experienced it. I got so the experience. he was either barking at that ghost or he was barking at Gator. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> How long has this been going on? <laughs> Gator? Yeah. Probably like five years. I don't know if it's been that long. I think it's, it's been, been that long. Time. There's no gator in here. You know what gator is yet? No! Tell the Dan it's about gator. Ian always, whenever <laughs> dog name of Gak is acting weird, he'll be like, oh, he's barking at gator. And then he'll be like talking to him. He's like, there's no gator here. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, who is gator? What? And he never, ever told me. For like five years, probably. I don't even ask him. Let's get tattoos that say there's no gator in here. And you say like I know what it is. You did at one point. I don't think so. No, you did. I don't think I ever did. You did, because it's a thing. Welcome to What Game Are You Gaming? Episode 5, I don't know. What is this, 11? 12? I don't don't care. It's the year-end episode for 2016. And Dan, if you know what happens when the year ends, we talk about game of the year. But it's been a while since we've talked about what games we've been gaming. So let's do that a little bit. Just we'll peruse, we'll fuck around, and then we'll get to the topic of the show, which is game of the year. What you been gaming? The Witcher. Hey, my game of the year 2015. (laughs) Uh, It would be my 2016 if it came out this year. Yeah. Oh, strong burn. Um, either that or Marvel Heroes, but that's also not a 2016 game. So, yeah, no, it's awesome. Like, uh, I like how much there is to do in it. Um, the story and like, I uh, I normally play in my bedroom. I have a TV about the size of yours, which mm-hmm. is like what a 32 or mm-hmm. something. And, but uh, one day, I think it was Monday last week. I was, I took the day off work and I was home by myself, no one was home. And so I took my PlayStation down into the basement where we have a 60 inch. Oh my goodness. And I almost ruined the chair. (laughs) It's pretty, pretty glorious. And that game is so beautiful and like detail. Oh yeah. Like even like my dad came in, he was like, look at the details on like his swords and stuff. Mm Like, like all this, it's just like unbelievable. But like. I like how much there is to do in it. Like, uh, I'm taking my time with it. Like, I'm not super far in the story. Best way to play that because, game. Because, like, so what I've been doing is, like, I kind of go around and, like, take all the the notice boards. Mm-hmm. And then any, like, side quests or Witcher contracts that are within my range, I take care of those. And I mix, like, I do, like, story stuff in between. But it was telling me, like, go to Skellige. 
Hmm. And it's like, you have to be level 16. I'm like, I'm level 8. Yeah. But So, like, I guess I'll just, like, do all these side quests. That's what they stuff. want you to do. Um, which is perfect. Like, that's, like, I love, like, I really like that. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like if I get to, I don't know what the level cap is. Is okay. it, like, 50 or I something? I have no idea. But, like... I, I beat the game and beat the first expansion, Blood and Wine, and I'm, like, level 36. So oh, shit. Okay. It gets harder and harder well, to level. Well, I, like... Like, like, like everything, but I figure, like, once I'm level 30, I'm not going to come back and, like, do this level 9 mm-hmm. side quest, no. so I'll do it now, but the other night, I only had, like, an hour, like, I was, I wanted to go to bed soon, but I didn't, so I didn't want to get, like, caught up into any, like, major side quests, so from go, going to those notice boards, they give you, like, locations, undiscovered locations, and so you look at the map and it's there's l- like a hundred question marks all over, yep. and most of them are just like uh, monster nests, or, monster nests, buried treasure. Yeah. and so I was just like, and I never like made the point to go look at those. So the other night when I when I had just an hour, I decided I spent an hour just going walking around to some of like. You know, clearing some of those off the map and finding loot and shit. Um, but yeah, uh, Witcher is awesome. Witcher is awesome. I played the no, I played the Hearts of Stone expansion, not Blood and Wine. I fucked up earlier, and that is probably the single greatest quest line I've ever played in any video game. Jeez, ever. that's a fucking um, statement. That's so if one. if Hearts of Stone could be called a game. That's game of the year, 2016. I mean, <laughs> but I can't do that. Like people are calling Blood and Wine like their best expansion. Like some people are just calling Blood and Wine game of the year, um, which I don't think really makes sense because it is an expansion on an existing thing. But, right. It's not like um, like the Wolfenstein yeah. DLC that came out. That's completely standalone. Or mm-hmm. uh, Red Dead, the z- zombie one. Yeah. There's stuff in Hearts of Stone that I just... I can't even, like, go into trying to explain what the fuck is going on. Some of the greatest characters ever. Some of the coolest, most imaginative things I've ever done in a video game. Hearts of Stone is so fucking good. But I played that a while ago. But we just didn't get a chance to talk about it because... Spoilers, we've recorded the last two episodes, like, right next to each other. Yeah. So we haven't recorded one of these in, like... It feels like two months, probably. I think it has been two months. Um... I beat Fallout 4. I went oh, back to Fallout 4 yeah. and I beat Fallout 4. Um, Fallout 4 was awesome, and I watched part of our Game of the Year 2015 video. Mm-hmm. Fallout 4 didn't even make my list. Not even honorable mention. Because I was like, it was mm-hmm. fun, but it was more Fallout. So I played Fallout, I put it down for like a year, and then I went back to it, and I was just playing around. Got Went balls deep into it, finished the story. No spoilers, don't worry. People complain about the Fallout 4 story sucking. Mm-hmm. The story doesn't suck. Story, I thought the story was cool. The problem is, it basically boils down to there are three factions. Which one do you want to side with? And then I chose my faction, and what they made me do and what ended up happening, I feel like the same exact thing would have happened no matter who I mm-hmm. sided with. So that was a big problem that I felt like my decisions regarding the main story didn't mean dick. That was big. My biggest problem with Fallout 4 is never once did I feel in trouble in the Commonwealth. That I was always the most badass thing Mm -hmm. in the Commonwealth. And that goes for robots, that goes for monsters. In Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, you would crouch walk an inch at a time if a Deathclaw was around. Praying that he wouldn't notice you. Because you were fucked. Or even a Yelgwai. You're fucked. If they notice you. Mm-hmm. Fallout 4, I was like, Deathclaw, pff, I have like seven mini nukes. He can't get near me. Plus, dog meets with me. Yeah. The dog's going to distract him. I can run away, hit him with a mini nuke, and then just la- laser rifle him four times. It's no problem. Yeah. Legendary Deathclaw. Oh, I'm so scared. No. Mini nuke, laser rifle, nothing. I mean, Fallout 3, though, you got to that point. I never did. I did. <laughs> I mean, like, when I got the alien gun. gun yeah. Like, I never got it. Um, like, that kind of broke it in the same way. Like, mm-hmm. I saved that for death. Like, I didn't use it on anybody. Just death But claws. death claws. And then, but it, 
Yeah. It made them easy, like, much less of a threat. There was a uh, side quest in Fallout 4 where I met this guy who was, like, he had this dad who was, like, 400 years old, and he was, like, a crazy, like, fucking wizard thing, and it was really weird. He had him, like, Fallout, yeah. he was a scientist, but he was, like, working on something in his lab, and I was like, what the fuck did he got? And I broke into his lab, and I found this weird-ass gun on the table, and it was called Zeta Gun, which mm -hmm. is a throwback to Mothership Zeta, the Fallout 3 oh, DLC. Yeah. The gun was a piece of shit, but it was there, so... Yeah, maybe but Fallout 4... Maybe it would have been good if you got it, like, early on. I found a different one. It was just basically, It was called a Gamma Gun. Hmm. So I found a Gamma Gun, which the, the ammo is weird. You shoot it, and it shoots these, like, weird electric bubble things. It was fucking odd. But I uh, I upgraded that. I got it to do like 165 damage, which is pretty good. Uh, my shotgun nice. only did like 120, and that was a badass shotgun. But yeah, if you beat Fallout 4, I'm glad I did. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I still got to go back and do it. Like I said, my my problem with it is like I like the way Skyrim did quest arcs, mm -hmm. where there's like all the different factions. There's like the Dark Brotherhood, the Thieves Guild. Mm -hmm. There, uh, the one where you turn into a werewolf, whatever yeah. that was, and it's like none of them. I am a werewolf. <laughs> like interact with each other, like yeah. they're all separate, and you can do everything. Mm -hmm. Where like Fallout, there's like th these three huge quest lines, and you can only do one. Yep. It's where like oh, the Brotherhood of Steel. That sounds cool. Uh, the the railroad. That sounds cool. Nope, you can only do one. No, we don't like each other. It's Where like, Skyrim, why are you... It's like, let me do everything. I just want to do it all. Mm -hmm. In Skyrim, the Dark Brotherhood is just like, oh, cool quest line. And then later you meet the Thieves Guild. Mm -hmm. They don't hate you because you worked with the Dark Brotherhood. They don't fucking know. Yeah. Uh, well, bring that back. It's like, you put all this work into this game and you're not gonna let, you're only going to let me play a third of it? Yeah. Like, what's and the And it doesn't make point? any sense to, for replayability with a game that long. Yeah, exactly. If it's a six-hour game, sure, I'll play it again and I'll check the other option. But no, let me get everything. Well, and it's like, I don't... Yeah, like, I've put so much time into this character. Yeah. Like, I want to play with this character. I don't want to do it just to, like, experience the story of it. Mm -hmm. I want to do it to, like... To get the satisfaction of, like, finishing that story, you know, with the character I put time into. You been playing anything else? Uh... No, not really. I got one more. For my birthday, Tara got me the Bioshock collection on oh, PS4. Yeah. And inside of nine days, which sounds like a long time for a game that's like ten hours, but I got a fucking job, I got friends, I got a girlfriend, I got shit to do, you know what I'm saying? That's fucking uh, fast. Yeah. I Well, dude, the other night I played like four hours of it yeah. straight. That's, that's awesome. And I played through Bioshock Infinite uh, Remastered, start to finish, and that dude, that I forgot how good that game is. I knew it was amazing. I forgot how good it is. I was telling you the night of the fights, like, every aspect of that game is so expertly crafted. Just the one sequence when you're looking for Commander Slate, and you, like, walk into the theater, and there's, like, the fucking super racist Chinese caricatures, and, like, the dragons and the fire, it's like a puppet show, mm -hmm. and the music is building, and as you walk under each, like, arch above you, there's another photo of, like, Comstock leading the charge with a message, and then you go from room to room, you leave that, you go down the right path, and it's a super racist Indian, like, red men with hatchets. Yeah. Dude, the, just the way the music builds. And then I made a different decision this time. You get to Slate, and you don't even fight him. Like, he's brittle, and he's old, and he's losing his mind. And you can either kill him, because he sicked all of his men on you, mm -hmm. or you can spare him. First time I played, I shot him in his fucking head. I was like, fuck this guy. This time, I couldn't remember what I did the first time, but this time I spared him. Okay. And there's a part later when you have to go to a jail, because you're looking for Chen Lin, who's an arms dealer. And the first time, this door was locked. When I played, like, 2012, the door was locked. Mm -hmm. Now, when I played again and I spared him, there was a door that was cracked open. And I opened the door, and he was in there just drooling at the table. And Elizabeth was just like, you were right, sparing him was no mercy. Like, the first time I killed him, so I didn't get to see that. Yeah. Second time, I made him suffer in the long haul. Yeah. Fuck that guy. But, oh, dude, Bioshock Infinite is so good. I can't wait to play Bioshock 1 again. 
Yeah, I got. I still haven't played Bioshock. You went back and platinum Bioshock One. Yeah. I still. I never went back and played it. So, I want to play that again. The I won't say what the end is because if the Danans haven't played it, <clears throat> do the end of Infinite hit me way harder this time? I I knew what it was and it still hit me way harder. Well, you said you understood the story better. I understood a time. lot more of it this time. But I mean, part of that is the fact that you know how it ends. Like you yeah. understand. Like, it's one of those things you almost have to replay, uh, just to, like, see all the stuff you missed. I'm going to spoil for 15 seconds. Dan Nance, go ahead and go ahead if you don't want to know the ending. The part at the end with the lighthouses, Mm -hmm. and Elizabeth has figured it out, and she's telling Booker, there's always a lighthouse, there's always a me, there's always a you, but there's different interchangeable parts. Mm -hmm. And Booker's going, like, no, like... I came here for you, and then you see in the distance, there's hundreds of yous and Elizabeths, and they're all having that same exact conversation. It just lets you know yeah. how meaningless what you're saying is, and everything you've just done is, like, it fucked me up. I was like, what? I already know this, and it's still, mm-hmm. like, I can't even wrap my head around this. And then I sort of think of what if real life is like that. <laughs> the concept of, like, parallel worlds is, like, very interesting. Yeah, it's trippy. You know what other concept concept is interesting? What? Mental breakdowns and divorce. Mm. And the Dan Dan should listen to the six one six hundred podcast episode number one forty five with Paul Sauce Below to hear all about that. That's just a quick plug. Honorable mention, game of the year, twenty sixteen, cyber topic of the show. What's your honorable mention? Hold on, before I give I wanna say something. Yes. I wanna talk about it. Before I just say it. Cut a promo. Don't just fucking, you know, lube up a little bit first. Sorry. Don't just try to shove it in there. This was hard to come up with a list of three games. And for not the good reason of, oh, there's so many, like, I can't decide. Like, yeah. I, like, looked at the entire list of games that came out this year. And to be fair, like, I didn't play everything. Mm-hmm. I didn't play Battlefront. I didn't play Tomb Raider. I didn't play Rise of the Tomb Raider. I didn't I play, uh, like, Overwatch. That game's... I mean, like, I don't need to know that to know. I'm not yeah. going to enjoy that game. Good for you if you do. That's uh-huh. I'm not talking shit. Last Guardian would not have made your list. No. <laughs> but, like... There was, like, not even any games like I, that, like, interested me to play this year that came out. Like, I literally... I looked through and I was like... I was like, okay, I goes. I guess those are the three. Yeah. Like, that that those have to be them. Like, there's, like, really not any other choices. Um, like these games, one would be, but the other ones probably would not even be in the discussion for and game of the year. This goes back to the episode we just did. Yeah. Is this console generation a disappointment? Well, this year definitely. Was. 2016. 2016 kind of sucked. 2015 was good. It was good. But, like, 2016 sucked. Yeah. 2016 sucked. And that's what fueled so much of my argument for that episode. It's just... Well, I didn't think- realize it. Well, yeah. I, I I started to come around and agree with you. At first, I thought no, but... Yeah. 2016 yeah. was one of the weakest games. I, I, weakest years I've, I've ever had since I, like... Since I went balls deep of being, like, I'm a video game guy. I like to read the news. Mm-hmm. I like to know what's going on. I don't own, like, the current Nintendo console, but I want to know what Nintendo's up to. I feel like that was, like, 2007 that I, like, yeah. fell balls deep in. And 2016 sucks compared to, like, It's, like, all my year. favorite games that I played this year, like, the stuff the stuff that I was into that I was interested in came out b- before this year. Uh-huh. The Witcher, Marvel Heroes, I've started playing, um, uh, Life is Strange. Yep. Like, Two of the games I've had the most fun with this year are Bioshock Infinite from, like, 2012 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater from, like, 1997. Like, those are, like, the two games I had the most fun with outside of uh, some of the things on my list. So, the games I do have on my list I loved. Well, two of them I loved. But they it two doesn't of, stack up to my list last year. Two of them I... <sighs> okay. Do you, want, do you want to start or do you want me to start? You go ahead and give me your honorable mention, because we're going to go honorable runner-up game of the year. And, like, so honorable mention would be Severed. Severed! On Vita. Yeah. Um, it was, it's a drink box game, which is creators of Guacamelee. 
Um, Guacamangus. It's a Vita game. It's a, it's only available on Vita. I think it might be on iOS now. It is now. But like when it first came out, like the exclusive. first few months, it was a Vita exclusive, which is gets it some points. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's like a dun- it's like a first person dungeon crawler that it's all touch screen. Yeah. Which, like, I think we've probably talked. I probably talked about we it. We did on when we previous games when we started shows. to go monthly with this show. Yeah, uh, that was like the topic of the show. Um, basically, was severed. Yeah, and I platinumed it. Yeah, like so. Obviously, I enjoyed it. Um, it's cool. Like I've, I liked it because like it was a it was a one hundred percent truly unique experience. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and like the art style is really cool. It's all like, uh, it's kind of like, um, I can't think of anything to relate Severed to. Like art style? (laughs) Yeah. Or, I thought it was extremely unique in its own thing. It is, but it's like, I don't know. I keep coming back to like, like Mexican. Okay. Like. Well, the, yeah, the closest thing I can think of would be Guacamelee, which yeah, is very, like, like, luchador-inspired. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, I guess I'm thinking of, like... It's, like, Aztecian, almost. Yeah, like, Day of the Dead, uh-huh. like, sort of. Like, like Dead of Yeah, like... Um, yeah, it's cool. I thought, like, you 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 hear, like, it's a touch... It's, like, a total 100% touchscreen game where mm. you swipe and stuff. But, I mean, it's not 100%. Like, you use, like, the directional buttons to move mm-hmm. and stuff, and there's... You know, uh, use the buttons for certain things. But yeah. The way I think it was a very well designed touch screen game where um, it's not just like mindless swiping, mm-hmm. like fucking Fruit Ninja or whatever, where you're just like, you're not, you don't even have to look and you can get a pretty high score. Mm-hmm. You have to like really like plan and like take your time. And there's, there's like, you're fighting multiple enemies at once and have to like, m- there's a lot of management and stuff. So. Vita exclusive, uh-huh. which is a lot of points. Unique experience, a lot of points, and there's nothing else. So <laughs> that's why so, I made the list. Severed makes your list for honorable mention for mm-hmm. game of the year. I, Severed's not a good game in my opinion. Yeah. I think Sever, Sever was fucking boring and extremely not fun. And I know you love it. Colin loves it. Greg loves it. All you guys are gaga about it. And Severed didn't do dick for me. At all. Like, I bought it. Doesn't mean it's not a good game. No, of course. I'm saying it didn't do dick for yeah. me. Like, a lot of people love Severed. And I'm, I'm OG Vita through and through. Mm-hmm. Day one. I'm, I'm, I'm a founding member of Vita Island. Severed, I'm going to ship it off to 3DS Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> Severed, like, I, I would have loved to have loved that game. And I was just so bored with it, I couldn't continue. But I, I respect that you liked it that much. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I platinumed it, so what yeah. did you well, It I, took me... I platinum. My name is Mayo. So. Yeah, but that's <laughs> zero effort. I'm going to platinum it again, too. Oh, God. <laughs> I feel like that fucking taints your goddamn <laughs> trophies. It, you know what it does is it gives me another two more platinums. Yeah, for me, meaningless pl- platinums. I, dude, I hit that manage jar at least 10,000 times. You are so... Like, you... <laughs> What? It's so weird, be like because when it comes to like Twitter and stuff, like you you find it so disgusting when people buy followers. Yeah, and when like people for my name is Mayo buying the platinum, it's a great bit. <laughs> it's a great bit. Yeah, but like, how much did you spend on it? Two dollars. Yeah, it's still overpriced. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So my runner-up. Honorable mention. My honorable mention. Thank you. May, uh, my name is Mayo. <laughs> no, that's game of the year. <laughs> my honorable mention. 2016. Ratchet and Clank. Oh, I didn't play that. Fuck, I gotta play that. The, the reboot slash remake that was partnered with the movie. First of all, maybe the best game I've ever seen as far as graphics go. It's absolutely gorgeous. Looks amazing. It's so much fun because it's Ratchet and Clank. It's it's I was going to excuse the pun, but it's the nuts and bolts of Ratchet and Clank. I didn't even do that on purpose. It's just like 
It's the meat and potatoes of what makes those games so good. And yeah, um, it's back I to basics. Yeah, I didn't play the early Ratchet and Clank games. The only two I've ever beaten were Size Matters on the PSP, which I loved. That game was a maze. And now this one, I'm probably three quarters of the way through, and then I just started playing other stuff. But it was so much fucking fun, I was loving it. And every room that I went in was just so gorgeous, I just wanted to look around at everything. And all the new power-ups I was getting, I don't really like silly games. Mm-hmm. Like, if no, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, I don't want them to be like insulting me while I'm doing it. I want to be invested. And when I hear about a game like Ratchet and Clank, where there's a gun that shoots a disco ball... And all your enemies can't help but dance, and you can beat the shit out of them because they're distracted. That makes me not want to play your game. Ratchet and Clank is fucking amazing. <laughs> that yeah. game is so much fun. No, I, the only one I ever beat was the first one. Yeah. The very first one. I didn't beat it. It was one of the first games I had for PS2. Mm-hmm. Like, I got it on Christmas with my PS2, and I didn't beat it. Um, uh, but I beat it on the, the col- with the collection. Like, mm-hmm. the... the and I was gonna platinum it, but I fucking I fucked up. Yeah. What did you do? Oh, you didn't you miss a, a I thing? didn't I wasn't collecting any like I wasn't making sure I was collecting everything on the way there because I thought maybe I don't know, I thought maybe I could like go back, but I just ha- I would have to play the game start completely over mm-hmm. and play it again and collect everything. And I'm like, no. You're like, I got shit to do. That's like I got way other games too I wanna much play. Work. And there's so much shit, so I was like, no, sorry. Sorry about it. Dude, GameStop, over the holidays, had Ratchet and Clank on sale for like $9.99. So that game is cheap now. Definitely grab it. It's so fucking good. Yeah, for sure. I'll do that. What's your runner-up? Duma! Duma! I was sure that was your game of the year. You know my game of the year? No. Though. This is the same thing that happened last year. You can figure it out. It's not that hard. <laughs> I can't. I can't even think of it's it. Pretty obvious. What about Duma? Uh, Duma was awesome. Oh, like, I know what your game of the year is. Yeah, Duma was. Uh, I didn't beat it, but like, yeah. you know, it's not. We're we're adults now. You know, we can't yeah. beat everything. If we don't <laughs> beat a thing doesn't mean we don't love it. <laughs> no, Duma was so cool. Like, uh, the gameplay was fun and like. Like, I compare it to one of my favorite games, I don't know when it came out, but I played it last year, was Wolfenstein, mm. The New Order. I love that game. Um, and every once in a while, like, I love uh, the mechanic of first-person shooting, uh-huh. but it's just that most of the time, the the games are just get through this room, get to the beginning of the end of this level, mm-hmm. and that's... Now I want more than that. I want more of like, you know, RPG elements or just something more than just shoot this shit and get through it. But every once in a while, I, that's all I do want. I just want to shoot this shit. Yeah, I just want yeah. to go through. And like Wolfenstein gave me that, and Duma gave me that. But Duma was different. Like, <laughs> where Wolfenstein is more of like a traditional first-person shooter where yeah. you like take cover and then you got like run around. And there's uh. You can, like, sneak and crouch and stealth, stealth and stuff. Duma, though, is super fast. Like, you walk into a room, and there's, like, barely any cover. There's cut... There is, I mean, that's not true. But there's just shit all around you. And the cover it's, doesn't even matter. It's because, not cover. It's obstacles. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, the cover doesn't even matter. Because if you hide behind it, the shit's just gonna... Like, most of the, most of the enemies don't have guns or projectiles. Mm-hmm. They just, like, charge you. They're like chimps. Like, I'm gonna get you! And, like, and then they just, like, so, rip like, at you. You, can, you cannot sit still behind cover and try to shoot it. Like, you have to constantly be running all over the place. Yeah. Um, And at first it was really hard because I didn't understand that. But yes. as I went out, like, as I got the hang of it, it's, like, it's a really challenging first person. Like, I think I'm pretty good at first person shooters, so, like, mm-hmm. They don't post too much. You are. I've seen you do pretty well but at like, like Call of Duty yeah. Online, which is not easy to do. Yeah, I can't. When I'm, I, I mean, I probably suck now. But yeah, yeah. We're not in the zone. Um, but Duma was hard. Um, 
And then there's, there's, uh, like the environments are cool. Yeah. Like you start off on Mars, whatever, and then you literally go to hell. Mm-hmm. And you're like fighting demons in hell. Pretty dope. What I want to say about Duma is if the Dan Dans have not gone on YouTube and watched Danny O'Dwyer's three part documentary about Duma on No Clip. It's all free. Go on YouTube and watch it. Three-part documentary about the resurrection of Doom. That um, Duma was actually a completely different game in like 2008 <laughs> through 2011, and they just couldn't get it together, and they canceled it and basically just started over. And that's what we got. Uh, well, I mean, it, it was originally like it, people were calling it like Call of Doom because it was very Call of Duty-ish, very militaristic. Yeah. Uh, just go on YouTube and watch that three-part documentary. Each part's like 20 to 30 minutes long. All free. It's fantastic. You gotta watch these on the uh, train. Yeah, the, uh, the Rocket League one. He did a two-part series in Rocket League. Also fantastic. Daniel Dwyer is doing the good work. You know what I'm saying? I'll throw in my two cents on Duma. Um, borrowed it from work. Played it. Very fun. I feel like it's unlike anything on consoles, shooter-wise, mm-hmm. right now, because it's, it's so fast. It's so different. It is so fast that it did make me a little bit sick, which is the first time I've ever had that happen in a video game. It was so hectic and breakneck that it made me a little nauseous. The fucking music. Oh, the music is great. The music is a lot like DMC, yeah. the Devil May Cry reboot, where I'm, like, cutting dudes in half, and I got my pistol, like, and, <laughs> and it's just, like, hardcore metal. Yeah. And it was just like, it's no so one's perfect. doing this. This is a maze. It's so, it fits so well. Um, so that brings me to my runner-up. 2016 Game of the Year runner-up. Alienation from Housemark. Mm. Alienation was so much fun. Did you fucks with it? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't an honorable mention, but it was something I might was maybe was gonna mention. <laughs> a dishonorable mention. If the Danians don't know what Alienation is, I did a Let's Play Friday of it. It was one of the first Let's Play Fridays I did, so I'm not gonna beat it into the ground about what it is. It's basically an isometric shooter, Diablo, guns, aliens. Go clear this out, kill this many aliens, get the fuck out of there, blah, blah, blah. You're basically trying to rid the world of aliens and shit. And I think they're called bugs. They don't even call them aliens. Um, But they're aliens. Yeah. But alienation is so... I almost said so much good. It's so much fun. I didn't finish it. I do need to go back and beat it. Because I'm at the final level. But I need to grind. Because the last level is so fucking hard. I don't even think I got that far. Yeah, I need to go grind like a motherfucker. I loved Alienation so much. What's funny is I put up the Let's Play Friday of that, and uh, Vince, friend of the 616 Entertainment Podcast, he does his own Let's Plays on Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> they're <laughs> and good, he's, they're funny. He's doing an episodic series of he and his sister playing Until Dawn together. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And um, he watched my Let's Play Friday of Alienation and he left a comment. He was like, this is such a boy game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Alienation, so much fun. Dude, there's nothing more fun than wip- wiping out aliens, fucking, like, getting trophies, getting a high score. Colin puts over house- Housemark to no end and I have to agree with him. I fucking yeah. love Housemark. Housemark's awesome. Uh, and Alienation's awesome. Um... When I first, like, the, my least favorite Housemark game by far is Dead Nation. I didn't like Outlander. Not oh, that I, I, not I, that I, I didn't really, like it, but I didn't put time into I it. I always forget that's a Housemark game. Yeah. But I did like that game. Um, and so when I heard Dead Nation, or Alien Nation, I associated it with Dead Nation. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's going to be more, so it's going to be more like that than, you know, Super Stardust or... Rezo Gun, where it's just like so arcade and it's just about high scores and like getting through the levels where um, Alienation was more like, you know, there's a story and, you know, you're like leveling up your guns. But it was so much like it, it didn't. The stuff I didn't like about Dead Nation wasn't there for Alienation. Mm-hmm. And I should go back and beat that. But I don't know if I ever would. What would keep you from doing it? Just uh, time. And time. Stuff. Time. Life. 
So what other games I gotta play. Before we get to our game of the year winners for 2016, I put out a line on Facebook and I asked people what their game of the year was. Now Rabbi Matter got back to me on Twitter, and his game of the year was Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Can't find the tweet now. Something's going wrong. Twitter's being weird. But I saw it. I I, I can vouch for that. For Jimmy Wendell, I've got his. Honorable mention, Gears of War 4, mm-hmm. runner-up, Pokemon Moon, Game of the Year, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, Rabbi Matter's uh, runner-up was Abzu. Abzu, that was the one I couldn't remember. Yeah. Uh, we've got Captain McKay here, runner-up, Killing Floor 2. And he says so because he loves Left 4 Dead, and it reminds him of that. And he doesn't play a lot of games. Game of the year, Duma. So that's two Dumas Duma. that have come up so far. On the lists. Um, so that's really all I got as far as people responding. I just put it up a couple hours ago. <laughs> but I just wanted to put the net out there to catch some opinions of the Dan Dans. So it's time for Game of the Year 2016. The artist pick. Go ahead. Um. So yeah, I did it when you said Game of the Year. I knew what it was immediately. Yeah. I, had to, I had to do a lot of research to figure out what my runner-ups and honorable mention. Game of the Year. 2016, artist formerly known as Mike Charles' choice for a game of the year 2016 <laughs> is Uncharted 4. I knew you were going to say that. Um, well, I made it pretty obvious for you. Yeah, you after <laughs> Duma was your runner-up. Yeah, but you still didn't get it. I had to it's, go like, don't think about it. It, it, t- <laughs> it took an extra minute. Um, yeah, I know you, like... Okay, so you... <laughs> Not that you didn't like Uncharted 4, but you, it was your least favorite. We, By we got, far. We got into it. And, like, I've, since there's some, with some distance, yeah. like, I, I'm not disagreeing with you that, the, like, you've said since then that it didn't have the same magic that the uh, other ones did. Not even close. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you there. Like, now that, like, I have some sep- separation from it, I still, like, there was still magic there for me. And I and I know you said you didn't like you got frustrated with it and you weren't having fun. Yeah. I was the complete opposite. Like I had fun the entire time. Mm-hmm. From like the gameplay honestly I might have had the most fun with the gameplay itself in that game. Yeah. Um like I thought there was uh more variety, more like um, more improvisation mm-hmm. on my part, which I liked in yeah. that game. Um, and like, I, no spoilers, but I did. I I don't know. I liked the conclusion of the story, mm-hmm. like to the Uncharted universe story, whatever. Um, I liked no spoilers, but the very end of the game, mm-hmm. you know, and the the closure we got, like, it made me feel. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is kind of what Uncharted has always about been about. It. I was happy. Uncharted 4, to me, um, no spoilers, there's a scene in the beginning where Nate goes into the attic to look for something for Elena, and the music from Uncharted 1 starts to play. Mm-hmm. And you get a little pop gun, and you're fucking around up there, and you're shooting little darts and stuff. And you can walk around in the attic and you can look at all of your stuff that you found in, like, the first three Uncharted games. Yeah. Because time has passed since then. That's the best part of that game. And it's so early on. And I don't think the game comes close to that throughout the rest of it. And Uncharted 4 was weird because Amy Hennig left while Uncharted 4 was deep in development. The beginning of that game feels like an Amy Amy Hennig game. And the rest of it doesn't. The rest of it feels like the fucking Last of Us because Bruce and what's his name took over. Neil. Drockton? Yes. Uncharted 4 is not a bad game, but it it doesn't even like it doesn't even come close to game of the year, like runner up for me. But I liked it. Doesn't sound like it, but <laughs> it's just so far below the like t- you can make a case, in my opinion, for all three of the first Uncharted games being 10s. And if I'm rating Uncharted 4 
that game that game's like an 8.0 in my opinion like i it's a great game uh-huh. don't get me wrong it's beautiful no it's it i get it like great. if it if that was like the first game mm-hmm. you would probably be like holy shit yeah if that shit came out in 2007 it's well still, like, it doesn't have to look like that it could have the graphics of the first one but it if a game with that sort of story even came out in 2007 it blows me away the first i mean one. if it came out now like and without was, and it was the first game yeah and it was called uh jungle strike I mean, it still could be called Uncharted 1. Like, there were never any other Uncharted yeah. games. And this was the first one. I mean, yeah, it's a great game. 8.0. <laughs> but it's, uh... No, it didn't have, a, like, a, an ounce of the magic of the first three, in my opinion. I think it had an ounce. It, maybe it had an ounce. Maybe an ounce. I don't want to sound that negative about it. But, like, I platinum the first three Uncharted games. I know, we've I talked platinum, about this a lot. I know. We did, so we don't have to keep going into it. So Uncharted 4 is your game of the year, 2016. So what are your two game of the no years doubt. so far? Uncharted 4 and uh, Metal, Metal Gear, Gear 5. Yeah. Wow, we should make trophy cases and display these. <laughs> My game of the year, 2016. Want oh, to give me a drum roll? You didn't give me a drum roll. You didn't ask for one. You ready? Goat Simulator. Oh shit, I was gonna make a joke too. <laughs> I, 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 I did Goat Simulator last year. I was gonna, this is two years in I a was, row I've said Goat Simulator. I was gonna say No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot. My game of the year is Stories The Path of Destiny. Fuck, man. That's weird. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. It's weird. <laughs> it is so good. When this game came out, like, I got into it. Because I was listening to P.S. I Love You, XOXO, and they were going down, like, the list of PlayStation software (laughs) on all three platforms by the Kind of Funny co-founders. And they were like, this game came out, this came out, oh, this one sounds good. And Greg goes, you interested in stories? And Helen goes, nah. And I go, what is stories? So I went to, like, the PSN drop, like, their blog post, and I watched a little trailer, and I was like, this is my shit. This, this game is made for me. So I downloaded it, and I play as this fucking awesome fox guy. And I've got this rabbit friend who looks like a dickhead and, like, acts like a crack addict. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to rescue this cute, like, bunny woman or whatever. I don't know what the fuck she is anymore. Stories Path to Destiny is so fucking good. If the Danians didn't play it, suck a fucking dick and break your dick off and go to jail. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a free PlayStation Plus game this month. Yes, it's free. So don't... Sw- sw- sleep on it i just downloaded i haven't played it at all because i'm still playing the witcher um but no like when you've told me about it last time and i watched you play it like the concept of it sounds super cool Mm -hmm. and like i like i love the idea of it so i'm definitely gonna play it it i actually recorded a let's play friday for it and something like i started and i was like in the middle of a story because when you start the game the game is only about 40 minutes long, mm-hmm. but you have to beat it, like, 40 times to get all the different chapters and all the different Like, each modes. time, if I remember correctly, like, you beat the game and, like, you make a decision. Yeah. And that reveals something. You find one like, of you the find out information. Truths. Yeah. And then, so, like, when you, know, when you, like, go through the second time, it's like, okay, if I do this, I know, mm-hmm. like, what's behind this door. Yes. So, like, that information can help me. Mm-hmm. going through the second time that's a really cool idea so i was in the middle of one of my games and i was like i should start a fresh story for let's play friday mm-hmm. like i don't need and i've beat i probably beat in the game like 20 times at this mm-hmm. point i was like let's start a fresh one so i quit out and i clicked new game and it was like you'll lose your progress yeah no shit like i'm starting over i lost everything it started like i lost everything you know. so not only did i not do the episode but i deleted <sighs> the game off my hard drive I need I need time. I need to let that soak in. I need to let it fade away, so I can re-download it, play it again, and get that platinum. Because I still want to plat it, but I've I my ass was chapped over that, and it was my mistake because I was in a rush because I was trying to make a fucking video. Yeah. So it's my fault. But yeah, it doesn't help. No, that's even with that game of the year. <laughs> I mean, it's not the game. Like you said, it's yeah, your fault. It's my fault. I wasn't paying attention. Dumbass. I'm a dumb job. Fuck that off. Fucking ass show. (laughs) I'm an ass show. (laughs) 
<laughs> ass show and fuck that off and dumb job are the phrases of 2016. And we, yeah. You made up ass show, I made up dumb job, and Tara made up fuck that off. This is a, this has been a good year for phrases, not we, so much for games. We got a we got a uh, a good trio of word makers. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? I mean, we covered what game are you gaming. We got 13 minutes to kill to hit that hour mark. Is this show normally an hour? I mean, usually. I, 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 got, I said everything. The other... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, when I was looking, the other two games, I will give a shout out to, not an honorable mention. Yeah. Shouts outs. <laughs> uh, volume. Mm-hmm. And The Witness. I didn't play either one of them. Those are both pretty... Kind of, they're kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, how do you feel about your investment in the witness? Didn't you spend forty dollars on that? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm okay. I kind of still want to go back and platinum it just for the platinum. platinum. Dude, I think it'd be pretty easy. You just it's a puzzle game. It's like up guides. Like yeah. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> I um, no. I like it was. It was really cool. Like for a like for I put several hours into it. Yeah. I put. A, a decent amount of time to do it. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I don't have a problem with it. Like, I knew... I I understood the risk I was taking. And, uh, you know, I'd say it exceeded my expectations for what I was getting myself. Like, I knew that it might not be for me, but I really liked it. Yeah. Well, I liked it. Oh, here's, here's how we can fill some time. What was your biggest disappointment of 2016? Because mine was Uncharted 4. Either No Man's Sky or Mafia 3. Probably No Man's Sky. Well, I had those two games, yeah. Yeah. Because you paid full price for both of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, No Man's Sky, I did, I, like, intentionally did that because, like, I figured that there would be updates and that that game would Mm -hmm. be, like, so... I would still, I still have some hope that, you know, like maybe in a year's time, because like they've already announced that there's like a pretty substantial update that they're going to do. Um, they already did one of them. The okay, foundation update? Yeah. I, yeah. You I can like build hand- a base and you yeah. can have one which of the sounds, alien guys in there. Which sounds cool. Like that's, yeah. um, like that's like a major feature. There's still nothing um, to do though. Well, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. who knows though? Like what? What could happen? Like in a year's time, what that game could look like. Did you sell it? No, I bu- I bought it digitally. Oh, okay. So and that's why. Um, so like I'm still holding out hope that like in a year, like if there's updates and you know maybe people come around on it, and I'm not like I don't have any intention of going in and buying it, but mm-hmm. yeah. And then Mafia Three was like I, it, we talked about that too. I still don't think it's like as bad as everyone says, but it's not very good. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone was pretty disappointed about Mafia 3. I don't think anyone really said it was bad. I think people just said it's not great. Some some people say it's bad. Really? I know some yeah, some people like say it's it's horrible. But oh, I haven't heard that. That's crazy. Um, it's just disappointing. It's like we did a what we did a show about it, or I talked about it on one show, and like I continue to play it, and it's just the same thing over and over. Yeah. And it's get. I don't know. You done? Yeah. Did you buy it digitally? No. Did you sell it? Not yet. Oh, it's probably not worth dick anymore. I know. I, I, I sat on my dick for too long. <laughs> You're an ass show. What constitutes an ass show? What makes you an ass show? Whatever you want. <laughs> whatever. It could be whatever. Yeah. Uncharted 4 was probably my biggest disappointment. Just because I wanted to... I wanted it more Uncharted. I wanted to capture more crazy Uncharted awesomeness, and I didn't. But, it, like, you, you know what I'm saying? It was so fun. But, you know what I'm saying? My biggest disappointment in 2016 as a whole was Batman v Superman. Yeah, that was pretty bad. God fucking damn it, it was so bad. Tara and I watched, like, the last 30 minutes of it on HBO the other night just because we were fucking around, and we were, like, flipping channels. And I was just like, watch this. And then she was like... Well, that was dumb. And then I'd be like, watch this. It, she'd be like, what? It, what? 
what are they doing? And then I didn't say anything for like 15 minutes. She goes, this sucks. <laughs> um, I saw Robinson on the train mm-hmm. the other day. Robinson, the journey VR. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that though. Yeah. I was thinking when I hear that, that name. Um, and he was telling me how he's, he's got like a new big TV or something. Oh, and, uh, Batman v Superman was on HBO or something. <laughs> And he he's not not seen it, mm-hmm. and he was like, you know what? Like I got this big TV, and it was just starting. He was like, so like, maybe this is the, a good time to watch it. And then he said he got ten minutes into it. He goes, okay, spoilers, but I mean this is already spoiled. It's a, it's memes all over the place. But he's like, it's like I got about ten minutes into it, and then I remembered, oh yeah, they their their whole like coming come together moment is that their their moms. Name is both Martha, and I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good movie. And you know what? I have held out hope for Justice League. The trailer looks fun. It's got fucking white stripes in the background. It looks, you know, you know what that like, reminds me of? What? Suicide Squad. Yeah. But here, listen. It's got white stripes in the background. It looks fun. And I saw a, like, a behind the scenes shot of Ezra Miller. Fucking Ben Affleck and Gal, G- Gal Gadot, all three of them together. It's all oh, behind the scenes, and I looked at it and I go, "Yeah, this is gonna suck." Dude, I don't. I've, think... It's going to suck. I. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to the theaters. Right. Oh, I am. I'm fucked, dude. We have to. We have to review it for the sh- for the show. We. I'm not seeing Wonder Woman in theaters. Re- see, Wonder Woman's the one I think looks the best. I, I, dude. The biggest problem I think Wonder Woman will have is I think it might be boring. I don't think. Oh, the, yeah, that's that's. No, I don't think problem. it's going to be a mess the way Suicide Squad was. I don't think it's going to be incomprehensible the way Batman v Superman was. I think Wonder Woman might be like kind of boring the way people say Captain America One is boring. Well, it looks like Captain America One. It does look like Captain the America exact. One. It's like the exact same fucking plot. <laughs> When does Redhead show up? What's his name? <laughs> Red face. Oh, Red Skull. Red Skull. <laughs> so, is are you putting your foot down? Because I thought we would do a review. Because we reviewed Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and Star Wars, and Captain America 3. And Avengers 2. I mean, we have... We've got tradition. We've got foundation. I know, but we didn't, we didn't fucking review Doctor Strange, so... Like we didn't see Doctor Strange. I know, but he's B tier. He's fucking C tier. And Wonder Wonder Woman is the, one of the Trinity. Okay. She's A plus. See, this is a DC Marvel thing. You're not. You're gonna. You. You're gonna want to go see every fucking DC. Every goddamn piece of shit DC movie. <laughs> That's not true. I w- I'm not gonna see the Cyborg movie, and that's because that shit's gonna get canceled. <laughs> There's maybe, no way that movie's gonna maybe happen. We'll go see uh, Justice League, but I haven't made a decision on Wonder Woman yet. <laughs> the hits are coming left and right. He turns down Ass Knife 2, he won't see Wonder Woman. <laughs> the artist is a changed man coming into 2017. Been reborn. Yeah? How do you feel, rebirth? DC rebirth. Slimy. <laughs> you ready to get the fuck out of here? Sure. Bye bye, Dan Dans. What was your game of the year? Let us know in the comments or don't. We love you.